Uh, mm. So this presentation consists of the two parts. First, the web awesome support for T group by me, Takashi Norimatsu. And the last half is web awesome and multi-factor authentication support by Pierre Speck. And questions. So today's as for the today's the first half, you can see this first half slide from this URL. So if you are interested in this first half talk, please refer to this URL. So the start, the first half of the our presentation, the web version support for Keycrook. So before my talk, let me introduce myself to you. Now I am, uh, my name is Takashi Norimatsu, the working at OSS Solution Center, Hitachi Limited, Japan. And I've been engaging in the providing support services about OSS and the contributing the, some kind of the futures and also bug fixes to OSS. The current works are that uh, contributing web awesome support to Kickoff, the today's tema, and the contributing the financial grade API security profile support to Kickoff. Then, the Kickoff is the identity and access management open source software, and its community is led by Red Hat. Today's the first half talk consists of the three parts. I'd like, so at first, I would like to explain what WebAwesome is. After that, I'd like to talk a little about my contribution to TGOG about WebAwesome support. And finally, I'd like to pick up one of the use cases about the TGOG, the supporting of WebAwesome. And that might be plausible the in the real world, I think. So move on to the first part, the what's the web awesome? W3C web authentication called web awesome is a symmetric cryptography used web-based authentication standard. This web awesome had been the standardized by the Fido Alliance formerly, then the currently the W3C. This web awesome try to achieve the passwordless and multi-factor authentication so as to resolve the problems arising when we're using the password-based authentication on several websites. For example, the credential staffing attack. Then, the, I think the measure, measure the characteristics of this web version is to utilize the key pair of the asymmetric cryptography in order to convey the authenticated information by and from, the, for example, your smart devices, the UBT, security key, and so on, called web version authenticator to the IDP, like key clock, <coughs> so called web version the relying party. <clears throat> and so this web awesome, I think the mainly consists of the two operations. So <clears throat> registration and authentication. Then at first I'd like to describe this registration operation at first. It is that the web awesome relying party like T group register a public key generated by web authenticator like your smart devices and bind this public key with the user ID the web authenticator key group manages. Then, so what's registered? The public key generated by web authenticator. Then, this registered public key can be used afterwards when the other the operation, authentication operation. Then, the, this slide shows the registration operation in key clock. At first, the web was going to be the key clock authenticated at first the user. Then, the identity identified the user's ID. After that, 
the members can authenticate the, authenticate the same user and gen generate the key pair, user's public key and private key, and generate this message called the attestation response. That can be used to convey the authenticated user's information and the credentials, namely the user's public key. <clears throat> so the, this verbose authenticator put the authenticated user information and its credential, namely the user public key, onto this attestation response. Also append the signature by using this authenticator's vendor's private key and send it to the WebOSAN peer key group. Therefore, when receiving this attestation response, WebOSAN peer like key group can verify this response by using the, this authenticator's the vendor certificate and public key and can confirm that this attestation response uh, has been generated by legitimate web authenticator, not tampered authenticator and not cloned authenticator. The also, the web RP can the confirm that this response has not been modified and tampered. Therefore, the web RP can trust the contents of this attestation response, the namely, for example, the generated user's public key. Then, the web RP that key group bind this the user's public key and close in this attestation response with the user's ID. It is a registration operation. Then, the other operation, the authentication operation, is that the web reliant party, the key group, verify the assertion, stating that the user was authenticated by the web authenticator like your smart device by using the user's public key that has already been registered on the registration operation that I uh, described just earlier. Then, the, this oh, so web authenticator, sorry, web authenticator authenticate this user and to generate the message assertion response <laughs> in order to convey the authenticated users the information and so for example the user's id and so users public key id and so on onto this assertion response <coughs> and append the signature by using this authenticated user's private key and send it to the Webosan RP key group. Therefore, the Webosan RP like key group can verify this assertion response by using the user's public key and can confirm that this response has not been modified and tampered so that the Webosan RP can trust the contents of this assertion response. And can confirm that who was authenticated by this web authenticator, namely the user bound with this public key. This slide shows the multi-factor authentication by web -Awesome. At first, the web RP, the key group, the authenticate the user by first factor, like the password. Then after that, the WebOSM authenticator also authenticates the same user, but however, by using the second factor, like biometrics. This slide show the passwordless authentication. Then, the WebOSM RP like key group ask the user for their username to find the user's ID. That's all. And after that, WebOSM authenticator authenticates the user by using the first factor, 
So for example, the biometrics, but not using password-based authentication. To the extreme case, the ID and passwordless authentication. Then, the web of PT group asks the user nothing. Then, the web authenticator actually authenticates this user by using the first factor, like biometrics. Then, not using the password-based authentication. So, why this ID and passwordless the authentication can be realized by web awesome is that some kind of the web awesome authenticator has the capability of managing and retaining the authenticated users' credential and information. For example, the user's privacy, user publicity, user ID, and so on by itself securely. This uh, capability is called resident key capability. So the web authenticator without this capability cannot realize this ID and passwordless authentication. But, but however, can realize both uh, passwordless authentication and multi-factor authentication that I've just explained earlier. <clears throat> So, I will explain what the web version and the two basic operations, registration and authentication. Then, here I'd like to talk a little about my contribution to TikTok about web version support. Uh, some day I thought that I wanted to use the TikTok feature, uh, sorry, a web version feature by using the key group, but yet not implemented. Therefore, I've done, along with such kind of a plan, the final goal is to get the certificate, uh, sorry, to pass the conformance test provided by, provided by the Find Alliance in order to publish and confirm that the key group actually operate in comply with the web awesome specification. Today, I'd like to pick up one of the pages along with this my plan to writing the design document. Hmm. In Kikro community, implement, before implementing the major future like web awesome support and so on, we need to write the design document and discuss it with the Kikro community. So when I wrote this the design document about web also support, the, there were a lot of things need to be considered. But today I'd like to pick up one of them. The, in my opinion, the most important point of supporting the web awesome is to verify attestation statement and authentication assertion correctly. Uh, this attestation statement is a message returned from web person authenticator on registration operation. Why? Authentication assertion is the response returned from web person authenticator when on authentication operation. So of course, the web person spe specification describes in detail these verification procedures. However, it is long and complicated, so time consuming and dangerous for me to implement all of them by myself securely from the scratch. Therefore, therefore sorry, that fortunately, there is a web awesome specialist in Japan. He has been developing his own Java library, WebOS 4J, to uh, conduct these complicated verification procedures. He has been also developing his own server using this WebOS 4J library, and also has already passed some kind of the conformance test provided by the Fido Alliance. Therefore, I've decided to use this WebOS 4J library uh, to uh, conduct these uh, verification procedures. Uh, currently, I've also joined this WebOS 4J community and 
done some kind of the contribution, that might be also beneficial for the Wear Watson support to key clock. The, here is the current status about Wear Watson support on key clock. The basic Wear Web, Watson Web support has been merged and released from the key clock eight. It covers the basic two operations I've just mentioned here, the registration and the authentication. As for the registration, the TCO covers the all kinds of settings to the web APIs and the attestation statement verification. As for the authentication, the TCO covers two types of authentication, 2FA and passwordless authentication. Uh, <coughs> This is the items that I wanted to realize in the future. Three items. At first, the account recovery. So for uh, the considering that the user loses their own web authenticator, namely the smart devices, this user never log in. Log in. Therefore, to get around this situation, we need some kind of the account recovery mechanism for the web authenticator. The Fire Alliance has already discussed this matter and published the short white paper there. But however, the, as far as I know, there is no kind of the uh, specification, official specification about account recovery for the web authenticator. The next is on registration operation, the acceptance control based on various kind of criteria. So for example, I think that the TCOC administrator might want to accept only the web authenticator that has the capability of fingerprint authentication. They might want to refuse the authenticator that don't have such kind of capability. So in this case, the whether the authenticator is accepted or not is determined based on this authenticator's capability. The other example is that the Kiko administrator might want to accept only the web authenticator to which no vulnerability is reported. In this case, this whether this authenticator is accepted or not is based on authenticator's soundness. So in order to <coughs> realize this registration acceptance control based on such kind of criteria, we might use the metadata statement from Find Alliance Metadata Services called MDS. By using this MDS service, the TCROC administrator can retrieve a uh, detailed information about web authenticator as a form of metadata statement. By using this web authenticator's AAGUID as a search key, this AAGUID is the, like the ID that is unique over this web authenticator's vendor's model not authenticator itself. Then the final item is that when authentication operation, the acceptance control based on the various kind of criteria. So for example, the key group administrator might want to accept only the result of the authentication by biometrics factor. So they might want to refuse the result of the authentication by password-based authentication. In order to realize such kind of the acceptance control based on this criteria, we might use this web authentication extension user verification method user verification method extension called UVM. By using this UVM, the key group administrator can find out which kind of the authentication method was used by WebAuthn authenticator. 
But however, it's very useful, but however, this is the extension so that not all the WebOS and OSINT CTO support this UVM feature. Ah. Now finally, I'd like to pick up another use case about Kickbox supporting the WebOSN. That might be plausible, uh, I think. So to say shortly, it's, I think it might be appropriate, appropriate to use the Kickbox for securing the financial industry's web system, providing their financial services to their customer via APIs. Therefore, it requires a high security level. So to secure such kind of API, there is the standard called Financial Grade API Security Profile called FAPI Security Profile. This security profile is based on the OS2 and standardized by the OpenID Foundation. That is the standardization body of the OpenID Connect and is related to the standard about digital identity. So in the real world, in the United Kingdom, the UK Open Banking Security Profile is based on this FAPI Security Profile. Uh, this is a flow of the first such kind of API access. And the FAPI Security Profile requires the user authentication and consent. Moreover, it requires the multi-factor multi -factor authentication in order to prevent the user impersonation. Then the Kickoff has already supported the basic web version support and can realize the multi-factor authentication. And moreover, the current Kickoff has already support almost all FAPI Security Profile. Therefore, I think the Kickoff uh, is appropriate to use Kickoff to, for securing the APIs, providing financial services, and that requires high-level security. So, the, today I've uh, explained the, this web awesome. It is the promising technology for passwordless and multi-factor authentication. Then, the current the Kickoff has already supported the basic web awesome. But there are, are still a lot we can do in the future, I think. Then, finally, I've picked up one other use case uh, about Kickrock using, uh, sorry, supporting the web version in the real world, namely the securing the API, providing financial services, therefore it requires high level security. That's all for my talk. Thank you very much for your listening. Hey, thank you. So the next half is the web and multi factor authentication support by Pierre Ascobe. I hope I'm ready. Uh, just uh, before I begin, uh, let me uh, thanks. Uh, to, uh, Takashi Norimatsu and uh, also Hitachi Corporation for contributing this to Keycloak. And it was uh, actually a very nice uh, community effort to put this together because it was not only uh, uh, his work, but we also in, in, uh, imported another part of the, of the work from, from different community guys from Switzerland, led by Elista Dolswald. Who actually, in, who actually contributed a lot to, uh, to authentication workflows, and that's the part we will see shortly in this demo. I will be mainly sitting down, so I hope you hear me. If not, shout. So uh, I will try to show. I will. I will try, try to show uh, from the clear database of Keycloak. Only thing I created was the admin user at the beginning. And uh, I will try to walk you through uh, actually how you can, how you can start with, uh, you know, playing with, playing with uh, Webout and uh, different stuff. So hopefully you will enjoy it. So here is my, my logging screen to, uh, to Keycloak and my admin, admin user will kick in and you see that it's only uh, username and password login and uh, right now we are uh, in the Keycloak administration console. Uh, by the way, how many of you uh, played a little bit with administration of Keycloak? 
<laughs> quite a few. <laughs> Thanks. So uh, if we want to enable web, web authentication, uh, first of all, it will be very useful to create the user user registration uh, or set user registration capability. So with this this thing in the uh, in the realm settings, and I'm doing all uh, all the presentation against master realm, so I don't have any any side application installed or whatever. So I will always show it on the access to account console. So for the purpose of of this presentation, it should be fairly enough. So we have to have a user user registration set. Then on the authentication side menu uh, and the required action, we should actually add a required action, which is uh, uh, the action which will be uh, added to uh, every user from now on. And that thing is uh, a web auth register. So it and I will send, set it like a default for uh, for all the users. So right now, if anybody tries to log in, it will actually pop up. And uh, if that credential is not, I mean, WebAuth credential is not part of the user's uh, users credentials, it will prompt him to, uh, to the registration procedure, which Takashi showed on the diagrams, and it will let you register your, uh, your uh, authenticator. So this is the this is part of uh, of the thing which I will be doing actually or I started. Uh, so let's create uh, let's create a flow. Uh, this is the browser flow, uh, which is a different uh, which is a default flow for for Keycloak, and we can start uh, with creating the copy of browser or I created. Uh, Kind of a template, uh, template flow for me. So let's do the copy of the flow. Rename it to like about basic. So now we have our flow started and then see that we have a, a cookie as an alternative flow of uh, alternative execution those uh, actually uh, flow can contain executions or uh, subflows uh, what this means is like uh, it can give you like for or it can give for the administrator uh, ability to a little bit, you know, tweak the uh, the login process, and uh, even extend it if if necessary. But not sure if if this is like widely supported. So we have those alternatives at the beginning. So once you have a cookie, you can it can be used. You are logging in. Uh, Kerberos is currently disabled for obvious reasons, but could be Kerberos as well. Then we have uh, identity provider redirector, which will redirect us for uh, when necessary. Then, and then we have a flow, which is called basic, uh, basic templates flow for now, because I, it was created from template. But uh, after that subflow, we can, inside the subflow, add execution. And uh, let's take the uh, authenticator execution. That will be uh, one thing. Obviously, uh, obviously uh, required. But uh, uh, before that, I should add uh, another execution, which will be username and password form. Uh, that's the basically thing which will ask you for username and password. I can put it a little bit up there. So we have, we have what, what is needed to be here. Uh, though, uh, that user interface is actually automatically saving the, all the stuff mm, and, and it's, it's changed. 
So next, uh, next thing to actually enable this flow is to go to bindings and see if we have a browser flow. Those are different flows for, for different kinds of clients, but for the browser flow, uh, I will change the browser for uh, Web Auth Basic. Save it. And then we can give it a try what happens. Let's open the console in incognito window and see we have admin admin to login and now, right now we are in a part where that uh, our subflow kicked in and we ha and we, we see that we have to or we can register uh, our authenticator so I have my Ruby key I can touch it and right now information came to keycloak server and it asks me to name it, so it will be ubiki black, and we are logged in. So how it looks like when we approach this situation again and try to log in? So we have. This <coughs> Set admin admin as before, and now uh, the credential is already uh, already in place in the database. So we can uh, we can use the web of authenticator. So let's do the read the blue one. See, this one is not working. Then let's do the proper thing and we are logged in. Uh, this, this was uh, just pretty, pretty straightforward and uh, I can show you how the user, how the user admin looks like right now in terms of credentials. So see that we have, a, we have two credentials, one is password, the other is web of credential. <coughs> which uh, is uh, like with a user, uh, user label ubiqui black and we can even check the data, what is in there. I know that uh, there is a still a lot of work on the polishing of all the stuff, but you know, this is a very fresh thing and uh, actually you, it was uh, grabbed from the, directly from the master, so I compiled ma our master branch and uh, this is what, what is actually <laughs> late, late is the development. Okay, so let's close this one. And we can, we can proceed to, uh, to another thing. Uh, I would like to show you a little bit more complicated flow, which, uh, which will also include uh, OTP because uh, as it might be useful for uh, for admins to have more credentials for users, if something is not work, working with the, with one authenticator, there is always another one, and it's still fine to have a second factor if with anything else. So let's let's select my template again. Do another copy. We have what we what we have from from the template, and we can start uh, we can start with adding the uh, another part. This one this one will start with the uh, with the execution called username. Uh, might be username password. also required and we can uh, after that we can create uh, new we can add new flow uh, 
here. And uh, let's call it conditional TFA. It has to be flow because it will <coughs> only only flows can be can be conditional, and conditional means that uh, it actually sig signalizes to the to the whole container uh, of the authentication that uh, behind it will be uh, some kind of uh, executor which will return true or false, depending on what we would like to have it, and uh, then the whole uh, whole subflow got executed or not. Uh, that was kind of kind of trick we, we adopted because we were a little bit considering to, to write like small script or something, but then we decided to go like completely uh, user interface way, and maybe we will change it later. I don't know. So let's add it, add the execution, which actually check if the user has any authenticators configured. Uh, it should be required, and then we can add another execution, which will go for a both authenticator. This one will be alternative, and then another one. It will be OTP form. OTP form means basically it will get your OTP code and evaluate it afterwards, and also alternative. So uh, our flow is ready. We can go to bindings, make it a reality. Both to the thing. Save, and let's see what happens. So we have our admin, admin, which could log in. And now see that uh, it shows us only the UB key black because uh, there was no uh, second factor, uh, second factor set. So let's log in. And we are here in the In the account console, we can modify a little bit. What we have here, and I will set up my TV <coughs> using just Google. Google Authenticator, so I add accounts. Google Auth and verify code one five two two three seven, and we are in. So let's see one more. What happens right now, we have two authenticators, so it should somehow see the key clock sh uh, showed us uh, authenticator uh, in this kind of not very user-friendly way, and we know that this is, this is not going to stay like this and already working on it. Uh, here is a small uh, small link which is said try another way. So we can, if we are not like in a possession of uh, uh, of our web authenticator, we can use uh, the other way, what, what's in there. And right now we can choose from, from both of them. So let's say use OTP, it switches to OTP. If user is not like really satisfied or made a mistake or something, it's still, there is a still thing like restart the form. So it will go through the beginning of the flow and the user can start again. Oh, I will try to log with, uh, with OTP, which is 016139. Done, and we are here. So this was uh, 
a little bit of a thing which shows the alternatives. And currently the alternatives are worked on that it will show all the alternatives from the from the beginning and you and you can choose right away what you would like to have. So this is kind of a prototype. Okay, let's close this one. And I I only uh, I have on, I have one more uh, one more thing to show is a passwordless, but uh, I don't have a proper a really proper device for passwordless, so it will be uh, not not exactly passwordless how how it should be. So go another another time for a template. I will create a copy. This time name is passwordless. And we can go. Uh, oh, that was close. Okay. So, first time we can add the execution, but this first execution will be the execution which will ask us just for username, which is called username form. Required. That's okay. And then we can create. Another subflow, which will be called authentication form, for example. And this one is required as well. And after that, we cannot execution, which will be web of authenticator. And this should be basically it, because there, there might be uh, also at the end uh, another flow with, uh, for example, password plus OTP, which will be kind of backup. But I found that there is a little problem, which which is not like preventing it for from usage, but it uh, it doesn't obey uh, the order of the. Uh, of the executions, and that will be not very not very nice for this. So let's let's try our passwordless stuff. And so right now uh, our flow kicked in. We have a user username or email or email is beca because in our login we said that. Uh, we can use either username or or email address, which is uh, if that is uh, already registered. So we'll go with our admin. Can log in. Oh. See. Oh. <laughs> yeah, I see where the problem is. <laughs> Thank you, Michal. <laughs> so another, another try. So admin. And now we have our UB key, so we can use it. As I said, this is not exactly uh, what passwordless means, but uh, we didn't didn't get the password and. The passwordless really depends on uh, on the authenticator you have, and all the of all the other settings. I'm not going to tie, but just to show a little bit of the uh, of the authentication menu. That uh, the thing which uh, Takashi was talking about is the web auth policy, and the web auth policy is uh, is actually here. So if you guys want to play a little bit, we'll be really glad if we get some, some reports in, in our Jira what's going on wrong. And uh, I think this is, uh, this is it from, from our side. And if there are any questions, we will be happy to answer.